This call, this call is being, being recorded. recorded. Welcome again, everyone, to the Guardian Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference call. This is your Friday Night Lights edition. And I am your co-host, Pastor Mark McCoy, along with Pastor Paul McCoy. And tonight, uh, Pastor Paul will start us off with a word, and we'll see where the Lord goes from there. Pastor Paul, you now have the mic. Amen. Amen. We want to first give, give honor, honor to God, God who is our head our of our light. Um, I don't know. I think right now I may have a little bit of uh, feedback, but we're going to keep moving forward. We thank and praise God as always for his mercy and his grace for this day, this day that we have not seen. We, we thank and praise God for the love that he has shown us all each and every day. And Tonight we're going to definitely move forward with the theme. The theme tonight is striving for the prize. Um, Many of you all may have seen the poster, and this is what God has instructed me to do to move forward with this theme because it's important. It is important for us to strive for the prize. And what is the prize? The prize is Christ Jesus. That is the prize. Now, even the word strive has, a powerful meaning. It's a short word, but it really just means to devote serious effort, energy to a thing that is important. When you when you devote serious effort or energy to anything, it has shown its importance to you in your life. You see this as something that is deeply necessary to obtain. It's not something that you want to play with. It's not something that you see as something that is to be just tossed to the side or blown off. No, we're striving for something. Well, this is important. This is something, this sometimes is life or death. This is something I must obtain. I must achieve. I must reach this goal. And as we said before, this goal, Usually these goals that we may have, and I know this is a base introduction because I'm not sure how God is going to lead on through the rest of this month, but these goals that we have, we, 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 have, we have a great amount of value. We, we, we explain a great amount of value to them. We, we, we see them as something that usually we cannot live without. And, and, and these things can be sometimes delusional. You know, I see people that are, that are striving for riches and fame. Can't live without. They can't live without the money. They can't live without finer things, as they call them in life, materialism. They they strive to reach these goals, and and when they don't, it becomes detrimental to their lives. Even though it is not really going to enhance their lives. It's just going to make them have a source or a sense of a a higher lifestyle. But understand that that's, there is a great difference between life and a lifestyle. A lot of people strive with all this effort and energy into proving that they are something that they're not or to get the approval or the impressions of others. Yet when we strive for Jesus, when we strive for Christ, We have to let all these things go. We have to remove ourselves from all those material things, from all these worldly things. Because when when Christ comes into your life, nothing else but that love of Christ, that love of God will fit properly. Yeah, we try to stuff other things, and I know I've done it myself. We try to have want to have Christ, and then we want to have a little bit of this world. That don't work that way. You strive for Christ, and this is something that in the scriptures that uh, that uh, that Pastor Mark had placed upon the the advertisement. This time, this was something that Paul had had attained for. He had talked to the Philippian church in regards to striving for the prize and what he had called pressing towards the mark. Yet it is still the same. Pressing towards the mark of Jesus requires more than a lot of people realize. And even I didn't understand it at the beginning because I thought that you could mix oil and water like a lot of people do. 
when it comes to your spirituality, to the ministry, to all these things, until you realize they don't fit. Can't strive for the world, and I can't strive for Christ at the same time. One must go above the other. And when you choose Christ, the rest must fall to the wayside. So if you all don't mind, let's, um, we're just going to take a moment to go to the book of Philippians, chapter number three, uh, verse number 12 through 14, that is the theme. But even before we do that, I would like to just take a moment of prayer. Lord God, we just thank you, we honor you, we praise you, we magnify you, we glorify your name continuously this day. We ask you to bless us as we decrease, as you increase. As always, we ask you to let us be blessed. Let us just be the instrument of your will and of your word, that everything that comes from our mouth will be spoken in truth and in love. And we pray this in your name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Now, if you all don't mind, I'm going to uh, I'm going to read this from two different translations. First, I'm going to do from the one that we all know best, and then we're going to do one from a more modernized standpoint to kind of see how this all ties in. Philippians 3, chapter 12, from the, from the King James Version, it starts off, and it just says, not as though I've already obtained. I were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count, count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, getting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, that's the King James Version. I like the message version because it, 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 really, it really connects with me personally. Because it says in verse 1, I'm not saying that I have all this together, that I have made, that I haven't made, but I'm well on my way reaching out for Christ who has so wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all this, but I've got my eye on the goal. God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running, and I'm not turning back. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, because that, that's, that's, I don't have this, this stuff in the morning. I was sitting up there thinking, I don't know why this came out as I was going to work, and I just popped in my head, you know, Paul, you, you, you don't have a theological degree at all. You never went to a seminary school, you never were taught the basic chronological and historical aspects of the Bible. You weren't or you aren't well versed upon the major and minor prophets. You're you're not even really you don't even really have a, a great aspect or a theming aspect or a lot of muscle memory when it comes to scripture. You're not able to truly say a scripture that will help a person in the time based upon theme and, and study. You don't have all this memorized, even though you would think you would because you have a great memory, but for some reason you ain't got none of, all, any of this memorized, yet you do have the anointing on your life. And I realize that's good enough. So I, when I looked at this scripture, as I studied it, as, I, as it, as it reached out to me, as I looked into this concept of striving for the prize, I started to realize that, yeah, I'm, I'm not really qualified to do that. I mean, I'm really not. I'm not really qualified to strive for Christ. I, I, I have too many problems. I have too many issues. My past is jaded. It's, it's, it's stigma. It is jacked up. I don't even deserve to be in this position, honestly. I mean, the truth is I, I should just go somewhere and lie in the corner because that's what I deserve. But striving for Christ is not one of the things that I deserve. Death is something I deserve. Torment is something I deserve. But striving for Christ, putting, my, putting this devotion and energy into Christ, and Christ has put the devotion and energy into me, that's not something that I feel is deserving. I don't have nothing together. I mean, I struggle daily with my own issues. I, I, I try my best to, to just get to the point where I can accept the fact that I'm breathing. Yet God still 
His grace and his mercy gives me the breath of life daily. Even though I, I, I look at this concept as, as being, as I, as I strive for Christ, as Christ has, as it says, has wondrously strived for me through his blood, through the shedding of his blood. Do I deserve that? Do it? That's the reason why I look at this situation. I say, yeah, I don't have it all together. But, but, but Jesus, you, you, you still took the time. You still took the time for me. You still took the time, even though you know I would probably never get it. You have got me, and you love me in spite of the fact that I don't deserve your love whatsoever. And see, this is why I understand why Paul said this, is I, even as I read from the beginning, because I had to start at the beginning to try to get an understanding of what he was talking about when he just said, be glad in God. In the, verb, he said, in the message version, he said, be glad in God. At the beginning. Like, We're about at the end, be glad in God. He just said, you know, if you don't mind, I mean, he had to repeat himself through this. He had to make sure they understood, you know, I'm, what I'm about to say, I've already said. Why? Because it's worth repeating. Things that you, you should avoid. All those backbiters, those barkers, all these things that, are, that come at you daily. And then he started to just mention, I'm just summarizing, he started to mention the fact that I, I used to, I used to think that I had all this together. I used to think that I was, I was, I was really doing God's will. I was really doing God's law. I thought I was all that because of the fact that I had lineage and I had a, a stature in my life. I was a part of the uh, part of the children of Israel. I had a long list of uh, ancestral importances, and and I was all good. So I felt like I had this role, and until I realized that I didn't have a clue about what I was doing or where I was going with all of this until Christ came into my life and gave me purpose and value and a structure and a sense of worth. So now, instead of me sitting back and striving for notoriety and fame and fortune and all these things of the world, I threw those things away. I let them go, even though I had them. And I didn't even have to really earn them. I had them. And now I'm striving for something important, something everlasting, something eternal that I could connect with fully. Someone that I could connect with fully and I could, and I could assure in the fact that everything that the connection I have with Christ will last forever. And if that's all that it is, then that's all that I need. Yet I had to look at my situation. I had to realize something about myself. Like I said, I'm just, I'm just summarizing. I to look at my situation and look at about myself. I, I, I realized that, that I wasted a lot of time striving for the world. I wasted a lot of time striving for the law. I wasted a lot of time striving for condemnation of others persecution of others, showing them hatred in the name of God. All this mess that I've created, all these things I've created, yet in spite of all these things I've created, all this mess that I've started, God still loves me enough. Me. Enough. With the ultimate sacrifice of his son, and, and, and these things are important. So what I've figured out is i got to let all this mess go. I mean, none of this is important. I mean, yeah, yeah we want, you know, and now I'm talking about me and my Paul. I'm talking about Paul, the person that's talking right now. You know, I was thinking about all the things that I've wanted in my life and, and, and all, the, all the things that I strove for in my life. I sought out and, and I never could catch them. They would always be one step ahead. Yet I still ran after them with everything, all the energy that I could have devoted my time to it. Because I had a dream. I had a dream that I would be the best. I would be top dog. I would have it all. No one could look down upon no one could look down upon me. And even though I sat back and I watched my watched my parents and others in my life as they as they sought after something different. 
gave me examples of this something different. Grew up in it. Yet I didn't pay attention to it. You know, it was all around me. I didn't see it. Couldn't see it. I didn't want to see it. It wasn't part of the plan. until it became all that I could see, till everything else was shattered and there was nothing but darkness to the left, to the right, and to the back, to the front. And to the front, there was nothing but Christ. Everything else was gone. Yeah, that's why I, re- I relate so much to this to this verse, to these uh, this theme because of the fact that I had to realize that striving for Christ had to become more important than anything else, even myself, in a sense. It had to be the most important thing. Two will say, you know, what about family? What about all these things? I mean, if you don't have Christ, you don't have Christ in your life, I mean, how are you going to be good to your family? How am going to be good to my wife? How am going to be good to my son? I don't strive press towards the mark for Christ, Jesus. How can I love them? How can I provide them protection? How can I be there for them? How can I stand as the man, the father, the pastor, and the lie if if I'm striving for something other than Christ? And it's, a, it's an interesting concept because of the fact that we, as far as I'm concerned, well, I'll just say everyone, we all have our goals. We all have these dreams. We all have these things we, we desire. Yet where is the priority? How are we prioritized? Paul had to prioritize. So. If, I, if you all don't mind, I mean, and just as we're walking through this in a, Verse number 10, and I'm just reading from the message, and I love this, because he said, I gave up all that inferior stuff. I gave up all that inferior stuff so that I can know Christ personally. That I may know him. And this is verse number 10 in the King James Version. That I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. May, so I may know him, all that makes him him. Even though this is, probably, this is a lifelong thing, a many lifetime thing, but yet to strive for that, that understanding, that knowledge. I may know you, I may know you, Lord, and all that you've been through, the ups and the downs. I may know you in the suffering. I may know you in the pain. I may know you in the persecution. I may know you in the crucifixion. I may know you in the resurrection. All these things that you did for me. I had to get away, get away from the silly things, the inferior stuff. Stop trying to gather these things. Stop trying to as they would say, you hit the big lottery. Stop trying to become something when I am nothing. When these things are nothing. As they say, they are nothing but dung. Not too many people sit back here and they, they strive for dung. If, if there are people like that, I would... Probably, I don't even know if I want to meet him, but the thing is, is that you have to strive for these nothing things. I mean, we, we do it every day. We watch it on television. We listen to the radio. We hear it on the internet. We do all these things. We strive for this stuff. And it's nothing. So, no, I don't have it all together. I'm not going to be before you too much longer. I said, not as though I've already attained. I haven't received it. I haven't gotten it. Either we're already perfect, or either we're already complete. I am nowhere near perfect in any sense of the word. I haven't gotten it. And I haven't even found a way to even even get to a point of even perfecting this as I'm speaking now. It's like a daily thing. It, it, it's 
the reason why I have to just get out of the way and allow God to do God's business. But I already know if you all really hear me talking, first off, you probably wouldn't understand anything I said. And secondly, I probably end up cursing everybody out, just to be honest. Because these are the imperfections that I have. Say something real crazy to people. Next year, y'all confused and all off kilter, and, and then everyone's lost because of the fact that I opened my big mouth and said something ridiculous. But no, I don't have it together. I don't have this thing together. I'm not even perfect. But, but I'm still following. It says, I'm still following after. I'm just in the King James version. I still follow after that. I may be. I may apprehend. I may grasp. That for which I was also grasped, Christ, trying to get Christ because Christ has me. Trying to get Christ because Christ already has me, already reached out for me. He reached out for me on the cross. He got me. He says, I, I'm, 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 but I don't call myself to have apprehended. In other words, I, I, don't, I don't have the, a grasp of any of this. I'm not sitting up here telling you just because I'm I'm talking to you all right now. Those of you all that are listening right now, those of you all that will listen that are listening later, please don't think that I got this. No, I'm not I'm gonna sit back and a lot of you as we said at the beginning. We have apprehended this, but this one thing I do. This is the one thing I am doing. This is the one thing I am starting to practice. I said, I don't have it, but I'm going to practice this. I want to really do this. But I got my eye on the goal. My, my eyes on the goal. I'm forgetting the things that are behind me. My eyes on the goal, as the message Bible says, forgetting the things that are behind me. As the King James Version said, I'm all kind of running back and forth. I want you all to see how this all ties in. Forgetting those things that are behind me, reaching forth unto those things which are before. What is before me? What is what am I talking about? What is actually before me? What am I striving for? What is before you? What are you striving for? Why are you listening to this? Why do we sit up here every Friday night and do this? Just because we have we don't have anything else to do at Friday night at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, whatever, whatever your time frame is. Why are we doing this? What are we striving for? I know that's probably a crazy question, but the truth is, you may want to ask yourself that. Why do I strive for this? Why, 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 what am I striving for? What am I looking forward to? I'm looking forward to people uh, who see me on the street to have to say, oh, that's Pat Paul. He was on fire. No. No. That can't be all. This. That can't be the thing I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to possibly getting some type of record deal or possibly getting some type of notoriety which gets me uh financially stable. But no. No. I can't sit back and say I do this every week. I look forward to this every week or I look forward to ministering the word of God or loving on my on my family, my spiritual family, and my and my bloodline. You know, I can't be sitting up here saying I'm doing this for the sake of the world or anything of the world. Getting those things that were behind me, because those things are really behind me. And it's not because I got older. It's because I realize now really what's what's important. I'm, I'm realizing I don't have it all together yet, but I'm realizing what's really important. As it says, I'm. Keep my own goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I am often running. And I'm not turning back. That is a powerful thing to say. I'm often running for Christ. I'm striving for Christ. I'm putting my devotion and my energy and all my effort into getting to you, Jesus. And I'm not going to wait until I die if his body goes back to the ground. I'm going to do this now. I'm going to do this while I have blood running warm through my veins. I want to strive to you now, Father. I think it's important. I think it's real important. And so we just we just we're just going to um, summarize. Like I said, I was going to be for, be in front of you all 
tonight too long to striving for the prize, which is Christ Jesus. What are you striving for? What are you striving for? Where is your, where is your energy and your effort placed? What are you seeing right now when you look when you look to in your spiritual eye? What are you seeing? What is that goal? Something to something that we all should just take a moment and truly think about. What is, what are you really doing all this for? Where's your energy? Where's your effort? What is your focus on? Amen. And and if you don't mind, we'll, um, right now, as we, and we, we, it is always its point, and, and I know it's maybe a little bit different, but, you know, if you were to leave this earth tonight, if you were to die, where would you spend eternal life? You need to have a knowledge and a, a true knowing of this. If you're not sure, those of you that may be listening, if you are not sure, it is time to get sure. It is time to make that choice, to focus, to strive for that goal. That goal can't be this world. It can't be money. It can't be fame. It can't be fortune. The goal has to be Jesus. It's the only thing that's going to last. It's the only thing that's going to keep you. It's the only thing that's going to take you through. That's the only thing that's going to make a difference, a true difference in your life. We say Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that his rose again from the dead, you all shall be saved. Now remember something, baby, that the word and is a conjunction word, which means that both things must hold true. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and you do not believe in Mr. Mark. You say you believe, but you do not confess. You miss the mark. You must confess. Believe, you shall be saved. Salvation is guaranteed. It's not easy, but it's guaranteed, and it's here for everyone that's listening. This is how you know. This is how you will know. So at this point, we're going to end with prayer. Lord God, we just thank you. We thank you for giving us the mark to press towards. We thank you for being the thing that we can strive for that actually means something. We ask you to forgive us of our sin, forgive us of our transgressions, our shortcomings, our failures, foolishness. We ask you to continue to come into our lives. If it, if it is right now, if this is the first time coming to our lives right now, and if it is not the first time, then come into our lives continuously. We ask you to bless us and keep us. We confess to you. We believe in you. We know that you are our salvation. And we love you this day. Your name is Jesus. Your name that's above every name. Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.